Hello there. The project I was planning on getting done for this video has run into some good delays and will need a little bit more time, so I thought I would do a video on a longer background project I've been doing that some of you might find interesting. Years ago I launched CapsWiki as a means for people to create detailed pages for repairing devices focused on what capacitors are needed. That site has been going strong and I've been continuing to maintain and improve it. Since making that site though, it gave me an itch to make another wiki just for myself to be able to put up whatever information I wanted. So I created wiki.techtangents.net and I have been slowly adding content to it. I did show it in my video about cataloging all of my big box PC games, but that was just the beginning, and since then I've done a lot more with it. More recently I've made some big changes that are making it much easier and faster to use, and it's growing even more quickly now. So today I thought I would go through how I'm using MediaWiki as a way of managing projects, publishing write-ups, asset tracking, and more. <laughs> Now you might wonder, why am I making a site like this? I have some bigger plans that this will tie into later, but for now, I'm getting benefits from it, and I know others as well. For me, getting my PC software cataloged has been massively useful, and some more recent improvements are making it even more helpful for planning. I also have a lot more hardware than I've shown in videos, and it can be difficult to keep track of what I have and haven't tested and got into working condition. My intention with this is to log and keep track of where I'm at with the restoration of devices as I work on them. Another reason I'm making these pages is related to how the site is licensed. Everything I create on here is Creative Commons BYSA 4.0, which in particular means that my photos can be used by other people under the right conditions. You can already find my photos on Wikipedia and other sites, which I think is excellent because it's not easy to get good photos of rare hardware. So my efforts are making resources for learning about these machines more accessible to others. Now that you know why, let's talk about how I set up this website that has been a bit of a journey in itself, and I'm sure there's others out there who could use a personal information database like this as well. The first thing you should know is that this is using MediaWiki. This is the same software behind Wikipedia, and is open source and usable by anyone. I've become very familiar with it after I launched CapsWiki, but for the TT Wiki I needed some more functionality that made this site a lot more complicated, but let's go back a bit before getting to that part. When I first started this site, I didn't have much to add to it yet, and mostly used it for my catalog of software I previously made a video about. As I began to expand it, I tried adopting some of the concepts I used for CapsWiki, but realized after a while they weren't always a good fit, and the project kind of stalled out. I knew what I wanted to make it work, but getting it running was not easy. About a year ago though, I needed to change my web hosting methods to solve performance issues with my Mastodon instance, where you can follow me on dialup.space by the way, and I decided to switch everything over to Docker. This caused a problem with MediaWiki for the TT Wiki though, because what I wanted to install was Semantic Wiki. If you're not familiar with how MediaWiki works, I won't bore you with the technical details and differences, but at a high level, installing Semantic Wiki would allow me to read individual values stored in one page from another page. For example, at the bottom of the home page, there is the beginnings of site navigation based on different device categories. We have the same thing on CapsWiki as well, but on CapsWiki, these must be manually updated. With Semantic Wiki, these are able to be populated automatically as long as I tag all of the pages correctly that they link to. Now, getting Semantic Wiki working with Docker to make this happen was much more difficult than I expected. There are a handful of Docker images out there that claim to offer MediaWiki with Semantic Wiki installed, but I wasn't able to get any of them to reliably work. I wasted so much time and brain power on Canasta in particular, which I did get running, but has issues getting it set up that make me deem it unacceptable. Clearly though, the site is working with it now, and that was only made possible by the help from my viewers and especially Kazer, because I had to learn how to write my own Docker file to build the image myself. Something I really did not want to do because I'm not a sysadmin and wanted to keep Docker at arm's length. Again though, to make a long story short, we got there in the end, and my Docker file for this is on GitHub along with my Compose scripts. The crux of how it works is by extending the base media wiki image, installing all of the requirements for Semantic, and then installing Semantic itself. It has its flaws, but it's been working reliably for over a month now, so if anyone else wants to run a Semantic media wiki site with Docker, you can take a look at my implementation for how to do that. Lastly, unrelated to Semantic wiki and Docker issues, since getting the site working, I've also been learning the media wiki API, which is 
pretty powerful. With the site running Symantec now, I was able to restructure it to better take advantage of the new features available. Let's start with the existing software catalog. In the last video I made that showed it, you could see it was a single massive web page with all of the entries hard coded into the page. It was a nightmare to add to and impossible to update information on multiple items without wasting an enormous amount of time. Now with Symantec installed, I could do the much more sensible solution and create a dynamic viewing page that would update automatically. In order to do that though, I needed to convert the giant mono page into individual pages. This is the first of many things that would make me use the MediaWiki API. I was able to break up the HTML of the page into a CSV and then use the API to create a new page for every entry. I did have to do some manual corrections afterwards, but this worked perfectly. Each page is made using a template, which is a preset layout for representing data. The main benefit of which is I'm able to update all of the software pages from one location now. The template marks the properties for the page data automatically, and now I can make pages that have semantic searches that paginate and display all of the software pages alphabetically. But with the power of properties, I've made more search pages for different parameters. For example, I can now view all of my software that will work on 68K Max. This is a massive improvement to the mono page, and the latest addition to the wiki was making an HTML form to use the API directly to submit new software entries. The standard way, which I've already pretty well optimized, is complicated and error prone with a minimum of visiting four different pages and editing the complicated template directly. This form, I just fill in and click submit. It uploads the cover photo and makes the page all at once. I even have a continuous mode, which lets me just keep adding them one after another. There's a kind of weird disconnect with how this form works though, because I'm using the JavaScript API, which you normally can't access because HTML embedding is disabled for security reasons. But I'm the only person working on this site who can edit it, so it's not a problem here. Next, let's look at two simpler sections, the hardware and guides. You almost certainly don't know that I attempted to run a blog with write-ups for videos released at the same time. That idea was not viable in the long run, but the seed that started CapsWiki did come out of that at least. I did make a couple of unrelated guide pages there for different things and have more recently made pages for things like the floppy disk imaging video. So I've consolidated all of those pages here and as I come across more complicated topics that have been difficult to describe in videos, <coughs> VGA capture, I'll be making write-ups here to better consolidate my ideas and update them in the future. Now the hardware device pages are very similar to the software pages but aren't as complete. Some of them better represent what I'm trying to do. but Others have been made just to test something I'll cover in a moment. I have started on some interlinked categories and properties that let me do things like find expansion cards by the slot type they go in, but I'm still working on adding more data and designing the way the pages are organized and interconnected. Lastly, something related to the hardware pages specifically that's been a bigger focus, asset tracking. The templates for the hardware and software pages on the wiki generate a QR code that links back to the page using a MediaWiki plugin. Using this, I created an asset tag label generator script in PHP that takes the title of the page, fetches the QR code, and lays out a tag. The code for this is available on the site itself, so you can see how it's done. Now the other half of this are pages for storage locations. As an example, I can create a storage location that is a bin. And then, on any hardware page, I can set that as the storage location for the page or for any unique examples. With that set, the storage bin page then updates to reflect that. There's even a giant label I print to put on the bin itself that I can scan that takes me directly to its web page so I can see what's in it without even opening it. I've already started doing this for some items as I was cleaning up recently and it's a pretty smooth process. I'm printing labels for the bins using a proper shipping label printer, also given me by Kaiser. thank you again, and I'm printing item tags using another label maker that I then tie onto the items. I will never apply stickers to anything. For items significant enough to get the tags, it's even easier to track their location because I can just scan the QR code to enter in the values. This was another of the things only made possible by setting up Semantic Media Wiki, and even though it's going to be quite the undertaking to get everything properly cataloged, it will be extremely nice to know where everything is like this. So that's how I'm using MediaWiki for cataloging my collection, presenting information, and tracking where things are stored. This is a project that will never end, but it's getting into a state where it can do almost everything I want now. And what it can't do now, I know I can make it do in the future with the custom features I've started developing. If you've never used a MediaWiki site and are interested in the more technical details of how the different pages work, you can view the source for any page to see how it works. 
But that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to subscribe to be notified when I release another one. If you want to help the channel, you can find me on Patreon. But for now, that's it, and I'll see you next time.